Paolo Bancaro, I think, is one of them ones. And the reason I think Paolo is one of them guys is because of the things that he did on the basketball court that were not scoring. You get out here in summer league, guys score the basketball, it's going to happen. It is what it is. You're going to get every opportunity because if you got drafted, especially first round pick, they're featuring you and trying to make you score because they want to look good for drafting you. Paulo game was a little bit different. Yes, he did all the things with the basketball. Yes, he made the plays. But the plays that he made that did not involve him having the basketball is why I think Paulo is going to be one of them guys. Him getting on teammates coming in as a rookie. Um, the winning plays that he was making down the stretch. I, when's the last time we've seen the Orlando Magic competing to win games like they were competing to win games when Paulo was out there on that court? in those first two summer league games. It's been a while. I feel like I, I always speak about um, people not ever blaming an organization, and they always say, oh, it's the player fault. And the reality is you see some of these players leave these some, some organizations, and they're successful. And I said that to say, I hope that organization is ready for that player. Because that player is a winner. That player, he cares. I mean, he was out there playing in summer league games. Like, he was playing in the NBA Finals with that type of intensity. That is a winner right before your eyes. And I hope that that organization is ready for that player. I don't think that organization has seen that player in a long time. I think they're looking dead at him. And, you know, the reality is if it doesn't work, everyone's going to say, Paolo, he fell, he wasn't this, he wasn't that. And I'm not saying if it doesn't, it's not Paolo's fault. I'm just saying it never, it's never told the opposite way. And so I'm going to say before we even get to that point, I hope that organization is ready for that guy because that kid is special. I said it when he was at Duke. I saw it. I watched it. That kid is... And then by the way, I, I watched him play one time at Duke. And that kid is special. He has that it. Like, he won it. And you just don't see that much in the NBA anymore, especially with these young guys coming up. So I'm looking forward to watching his career grow um, and blossom. I was actually happy to see him get shut down in the summer league. I thought enough had been seen and we all knew, like we know, we, we saw what we needed to see. He, Paolo got it. And I'm looking forward to watching. And speaking of our summer league team, um, and I'm going to say this publicly because I said it to his face, I thought Jonathan Kaminga was so, so, so bad in the game that I went to. Uh, they were playing the New York Knicks. I thought he was very, very, very bad. He didn't look engaged to me. And I was disappointed because the reason I was disappointed was because when my OGs came to see me play in summer league, I'm bouncing off the wall. Like, your OGs there. Like, you, you, you want to destroy whoever in front of you because your OGs are sitting there. And it just didn't feel like he had to pop. Like, because if you got to pop, there's no one in this in the summer league that can touch you. And it's short enough, he bounced back the next game and he shows that. Like, yeah, if I got the pop, there's nobody in the summer league that can guard me. And then he bounced back to the next game and he shows it again with 29. Like, and so I was very disappointed in JK's first game. His next two, he showed why he's the number seven pick in the draft. He shows why uh, there's so much... Um, belief and excitement around him for this organization and you know why there's a belief that you know with the losses in free agency that he'll fill that spot going into next year and I think that's something that as a 19 year old he has to understand like that's that's a huge role to fill 
But ultimately, you're just playing basketball and you've been doing this your whole life. And so I'm looking forward to him getting that opportunity. It was great to see how he bounced back in those next couple of games. Uh, Mo, OG Moses Moody, as I like to call him, Moses is an old soul. Moses acts like a 15-year vet in the league. He does absolutely nothing wrong. Moses played incredible. And what I loved about it, there was a guy on New York's um, team, um, his last name was Jeffries, and he hit a trade and he started talking to Mo. And like Moses is one of those guys where Mo not going to start talking to you. Like, you, but if you talk, he's going to say something back. And so he hit the three, he started talking, and Moses said something back, run it down. Mo come down, next play. Bam, Trey Ball. Hey, I'm not the one. And you see Moses yelling to him, I'm not the one. But Moses has had a very, very, very good summer league. It's great to see his growth. Um, like I've told y'all, that, that kid puts in work like not many that I've ever seen before. And just his discipline, like that's a, that's a skill. And he has that skill. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, we got the big fella back out there, James Wiseman. And I think, I think Wiseman looks, looks very good out there, especially all things being considered. And, and that is, James Wiseman really haven't played basketball since like 2018. If you think about it, he played, what, six, four games this, his year at Memphis, and he sat the rest of the year. Played like 20 games his rookie year in the NBA. Missed the rest of that year. And then, obviously, missed all of last year. And now he's just now getting back. So this is really his first basketball since like 2018. And it's at a level that not many people can get accustomed to in years at a time, let alone um, with the small amount of time that he's had to get accustomed to. And so I thought uh, his showing um, out there on the court, I thought it's been solid. Are there some things you want to correct? Absolutely. There's some things you want to correct about myself on a basketball court. There's things you want to correct about LeBron James on a basketball court. Uh, there's things you want to correct about Steph Curry. Like, there's always going to be something you want to correct with anybody. But I think uh, the things that James Wiseman was able to show in the two games that he's played is absolutely remarkable. Um, and, and just his journey back, just happy to see him out there doing what he loves to do again and, and having the opportunity. Uh, to play basketball. I know there was a lot of talk around the first game, like, oh, he had two rebounds. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, that's the first thing I looked at, too. Like, why is you can't have two rebounds? But for those of you out there who's just going to criticize and don't know, uh, I saw the guy um, from, uh, uh, from, 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 from the Rattle, Damon Rattle uh, show in the Bay, I think, or something like that. Uh, dude, Damon, like, you come out and, and you want to talk about um, – Chet Holmgren is light years ahead of James Wiseman right now. Whatever you said made that statement. Let me help you out. Um, rebounding is a timing thing. You know, rebounding is not just I'm tall, I'm long, I can jump, I'm athletic. Rebounding is timing. And for someone that has not played basketball since 2018, I know you wouldn't understand, but your timing is probably messed up. Because that's four years and some change of not consistently playing basketball. So those that has done this will understand that that is 100% of timing thing. Like, um, like I said, again, I would never excuse James Wiseman having two rebounds, nor do I think James Wiseman would excuse it. But I am also, and, and as someone who's done this at this level, who continues to do this at this level, um, I do understand that rebounding is Obviously, you got to have a knack for the ball. You got to do the proper things in boxing out. Uh, Coach Izzo used, used to teach us hit, find, and fetch. Go hit your man, find the ball, then go get it. Yeah, all of those things. And who wants the ball more? It's all of those things. But equally as important, if not the most important, is your time. You know, you can have a ball right there. Like, oh, I got it. And you jump with the wrong, like, your time is off on your jump. You, you don't get it. So to try to make it a thing and, like, compare – these two guys, after, and, and this kid's been out for four years. Ridiculous. And also, you can't judge who's better off a summer league game. So let's stop the foolishness. It's ridiculous. Welcome back, James Wiseman. 